Hello and welcome back. We're doing the Lessons of A Course in Miracles here. My name is Sherry and I'm happy to have you. We are on lesson number 86. We are still in a review period and we're going to review two lessons today. The first lesson is only God's plan for salvation will work. It is senseless for me to search wildly about for salvation. I have seen it in many people and in many things, but when I reached for it, it was not there. I was mistaken about where it is. I was mistaken about what it is. I will undertake no more idle seeking. Only God's plan for salvation will work, and I will rejoice because his plan can never fail. There, these are some suggested forms for applying this idea specifically. God's plan for salvation will save me from my perception of this. There is no exception in God's plan for my salvation. Let me perceive this only in the light of God's plan for salvation. Now again, just like the last few review periods, the word this is where you insert some kind of an upset, some kind of thing that's popping up for you in your life right now. And you consider how whatever that thing is, that God's plan for salvation will save you from your perception of it. So I mentioned in the past few videos that I'm enjoying a wonderful new relationship that is absolutely amazing and incredible. And of course, when you allow intimacy into your life, especially for someone like me who has not had that for a few years, um, the mind and the heart open you up to some uh, opportunities to feel things that maybe you haven't felt in a while. And what I'm noticing is that in this space of having this beautiful mirror and reflecting, um, I'm, I'm being shown places of myself that I have been hiding from myself. This, this unconsciousness, this shadow aspect of myself, which is really just a place where I've defended against being more traumatized. And so, um, you know, as I'm practicing my lessons today, I'm going deeply into these shadow places of myself and these uh, traumas that are still there. They're, they're held in my energy space. They're held in my body. They're held in my energy field. And um, if it weren't for the, the closeness of another being in my life right now, they may continue to hide there. And so I am essentially blocking access to love's presence by not knowing about these traumas and not, or, or at least not knowing that I still had more healing to do around certain things. So I'll tell you what, this book, <laughs> this is medicine. And we can, we can go into those spaces fearlessly because we have Jesus as our big brother and guide and teacher, and we can rely on these ideas that only God's plan will work for salvation, not our little plan of putting up walls around our traumas to defend ourselves from having to deal with the uh, feelings that exist there. So, all right, second lesson for review. Holding grievances is an attack on God's plan for salvation. And I think this one really applies to what I was just talking about. Holding grievances is an attempt to prove that God's plan for salvation will not work. Yet only his plan will work. By holding grievances, I am therefore excluding my only hope of salvation from my awareness. I would no longer defeat my own best interests in this insane way. I would accept God's plan for salvation and be happy. Specific applications for this idea might be in these forms. I am choosing between I am choosing between misperception and salvation as I look on this. If I see grounds for grievances in this, I will not see grounds for my salvation. This calls for salvation, not attack. So there you go, lesson number 86. We're in this review period and shit's coming up, you guys, so let's let's keep it real. All right, so let's see what A Year of Forgiveness has to say about Lesson 86. You are blessed beings indeed. I am that one that you know is Jesus, and this is one of the core teachings of A Course in Miracles. 
when you judge and hold grievances, when you say, you shouldn't have done that. It shouldn't be this way. This is wrong. You, in fact, attack God in the sense that something is happening and this is what the universe is expressing at this time. And I just want to point out really quickly the, the phrase, you shouldn't have done that, you could be talking to yourself. And in fact, that's what I found myself doing at three o'clock this morning, thinking about some things in my life. So um, yeah, remember that. It's not always external. In fact, it's always internal, but a lot of times we think it's another person, but really we're, we're doing a lot of these things to ourself, ourselves. When you argue with reality in the world in which you find yourself now, we use this word with a small r, you fight with God. It is that simple. The thing you dispute has already come to being. It is there. It is important for you to truly understand the extreme power of acceptance. When you stop arguing with what is and go into a place of acceptance, even if you don't want more of what is right now, it benefits you to accept reality because that is what has been decided upon. That is what has manifested and there's no point in arguing with it. It is what it is. Sometimes what is seems bad. Sometimes what is looks like something you don't want, the death of a loved one or lack of money, but it is what is. You are foolish and wasting your time to argue with what is. You may shift and change your perception. You may work on becoming more loving as a consequence of what is. You cannot change it. The world does not hold your salvation. Look inside for your salvation. Look to love for your salvation. Do not seek salvation in the world through another person, more money, or a better body, but seek salvation by aligning with love so you match what is for what is always loves. Your perception, judgments, and attacks on love, and attacks on yourself do not love. I'm going to read that again. That's probably a great way to end this. Your perception, judgments, and attacks on yourself do not love. I am that one that you know is Jesus, and we will speak to you again tomorrow. All right, 86 lessons in, and we're doing some great work. I hope that you're feeling this, feeling the effects of this, really deeply practicing your lessons. Remember, these are hitting these lessons twice a day during the review period and getting the most out of your meditations because it truly is the best medicine out there for the Western mind. Much love to all of you and I will see you tomorrow.